Welcome to St Cyprian's Church Online Worship for the last 24 hours of the life of Christ. In this service we remember the Last Supper and remember the events of that Good Friday 2,000 years ago. We have here symbols of those events. We have a candle that the light of Christ came into our world. We have a chalice and a pattern. These two things representing the Last Supper and we share in these things, taking for bread and wine, remembering the events of that last evening. And of course we have the cross here. This is our altar cross, but again reminding us, Jesus died for us, nailed to this cross, an absolutely dreadful way to die. And in this service, we remember these events and allow them to speak to us and to be part of us. We'll have a pause and then we share some memories. There is a green hill far away without a city wall where the dear Lord was crucified, who died to save us all. We may not know, we cannot tell what pains he had to bear, but we believe it was for us he hung and suffered there. He died that we might be forgiven. He died to make us good, that we might go at last to him, saved by his precious blood. There was no other good enough to pay the price of sin. He only could unlock the gate of hell and let us in. And we must love him too, and trust in his redeeming blood, and try his works to do. We start by remembering the Last Supper. Jesus and the disciples celebrating the Passover. And this is what Luke says about it. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve disciples. While they were eating at table, Jesus said, I tell you that one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. The disciples were upset and began to ask him, one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, do you? Jesus answered, It will be one of you twelve, one who dips his bread in the dish with me. The Son of Man will die, as the scriptures say he will. But how terrible for that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would have been better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, Jesus took a piece of bread, gave a prayer of thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. Take it, he said, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks to God, and handed it to them, and they all drank from it. Jesus said, this is my blood which is poured out for many, my blood which seals God's covenant. <clears throat> 
I tell you, I will never drink again this wine until the day I drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. That must have been a truly bittersweet moment. Here together celebrating with friends. And yet the whole evening, the whole meal riddled through with hints, suggestions of what was about to happen. Jesus, about to be, be betrayed by this disciple, by the Jews, by the Romans, by his friends. And Jesus knowing his blood was going to be shed, his body broken. So difficult to imagine what that would have felt like, been like. Here they were with their bread, with their wine. And yet, this celebration so riddled through with the pain of the experience of Jesus, going through what he did because of his love for us. Shared in that last supper, Jesus and the disciples went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And again, Mark tells us about it. They came to a place called Gethsemane 
And Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James and John with him. Distress and anguish came over him. And he said to them, the sorrow in my heart is so great that it almost crushes me. Stay here and keep watch. He went a little farther on, threw himself on the ground and prayed that if possible, he might not have to go through that time of suffering. Father, he prayed, my father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he returned and found the three disciples asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Weren't you able to stay awake even for one hour? And he said to them, keep watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away once more and prayed, saying the same words. Then he came back to the disciples and found them asleep. They could not keep their eyes open and they did not know what to say to him. When he came back the third time, he said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is now being handed over to the power of sinful men. Get up. Let us go. Look, here is the man who is betraying me. That Garden of Gethsemane moment is deeply poignant, upsetting even, to see the anguish, the suffering that Jesus went through alone. And then the road was set, the road all the way to the cross. I can't imagine how hard it must have felt. And yet Jesus, Jesus was still holding on to God, willing to do what God wanted when he says, yet not what I want, but what you want. How great is our Lord that he could say that.
The next morning, after the meal, after the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus had been condemned to death. And this is what Mark has to say, describing what happened to him. On the way, they met a man named Simon who was coming into the city from the country, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. They took Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they tried to give him wine mixed with a drug called myrrh, but Jesus would not drink it. Then they crucified him and divided his clothes among themselves, throwing dice to see who would get which piece of clothing. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The notice of the accusation against him said, the king of the Jews. They also crucified two bandits with Jesus, one on his right and the other on his left. People passing by shook their heads and hurled insults at Jesus. Aha, you were going to tear down the temple and build it up again in three days. Now, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law jeered at Jesus, saying to one another, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let us see the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. And the two who were crucified with Jesus insulted him also. At noon, the whole country was covered with darkness, which lasted for three hours. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why did you abandon me? Some of the people there heard him and said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. One of them ran out with a sponge soaked in cheap wine and put it on the end of a stick. Then he held it up to Jesus' lip and said, Wait, let us see if Elijah is coming to bring him down from the cross. With a loud cry, Jesus died. The curtain hanging in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The army officer who was standing there in front of the cross saw how Jesus had died. This man was really the Son of God, he said. I always find it deeply disturbing to read this story. I find it really shocking and painful. It was brutal. It was horrific. I just can't put into words. It's love. Jesus is loving us. He loved us then, he loves us now. And all of this pain, all this horror, it was the symptoms of his love. In love, Jesus died for me. Oh 
Did there such love and sorrow meet? Or forms compose so rich a crown? The whole realm of nature mine that were Of so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my home. Whatever your faith or none. Wish you peace. Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you that you died. Thank you your body was broken. Lord, I didn't want it like that. I don't want it like that. But thank you anyway. Pray, Lord, that the people in our world would know that you did this for them. And pray, Lord, that they'll be comforted as they too suffer. I pray, Lord, that people will reach out to you 
will look to that cross and accept the love that you want in their lives. And I ask this, Lord, in the name of Jesus, who died. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And may the crucified Christ give you the love he's given me. Amen. <laughs>